So in the Seattle airport, looking for a place just to relax and meditate and read, I looked over in the corner of the airport and I saw a black man who was a Muslim reading the Quran. I said, he's a good candidate for the gospel. So I walked over to this Muslim brother who was reading the Quran and I just stood up over him. After I stood there maybe 30 seconds, he must have felt the heat from my presence. Because <laughs> he looked up. And when he looked up, I extended my hand to him. I said, sir, what is your name? He said, my name is Yusuf Nuri Muhammad. I said, well, my name is Johnny James Jesus. I said, I noticed you're reading your book, the Quran. And I had a little small Bible just like this, only it was black. On that day, I had my little black Bible. I was wearing a black suit, a black turtleneck, black shoes, black horn rim glasses, and I'm black. I was carrying my little black Bible. I took my little black Bible, and I laid it right on top of his Quran. And I said to the Muslim, my book is better than your book. I said, my book is better than your book. Now, if you know anything about Muslims, you know they don't play that. <laughs> he stood up. I didn't know he was that size. <laughs> he was tall like tree and black like bear. He had muscles everywhere. <laughs> I said, Sit down, brother. It's going to be all right, brother Yusuf Nuri Muhammad. I said, but my book is better than your book. I said, read in your book the sixth surah, verse 1. The Quran calls the chapter surahs. It has 114 surahs. The Quran calls the verses ayahs. It has about 6,339 ayahs. I said, read the sixth surah, verse 1. He was fumbling, and he took too long. I got nervous, so I said, look, man, it says all be unto Allah, the creator of the heaven and the earth. When he found it, he said, that's what it says. I said, I know that's what it says. That's your book. I say, but my book said in Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. <laughs> he said, He said, ain't that the same thing? I said, no, man. Your book said Allah. Mine said God. I said, don't you know that Allah came out of heathenism? Allah was the name of the pagan moon god. Why do you think the Islamic flag has a moon slice and a star? Because they worship the sun, moon, and stars, and Islam was founded on that principle, and Allah was the pagan moon god, and God told Israel in the fourth chapter of Deuteronomy, verse 32, don't worship the sun, moon, or stars. I say, your book, your book, your book has a false name for God. But I said, my book is better than your book. <laughs> and in my book, it said in Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning, God. And I said, God is from the word or the noun in the Hebrew, Elohim. El is the strong one. And Elohim is the strong one that created. When all the weather was going all wild, they said it was El Nino. They had the El right. Drop the Nino. God! Somebody said back home, how come they blame all this bad weather on that black man? I said, what black man? He said, El Negro. I said, no, you got it wrong. It was El Nino. <coughs> I said to the Muslim brother, read in your book the 19th surah, verse 66. He turned to the 19th surah, and before he could read verse 66, I jumped the gun, and I beat him to the punch, and I quoted it for him. The prophet Muhammad says, when I am dead and buried in the ground and go back to dust, is that all, or what's going to happen to me? 
I said, but my book said, now remember, I said, my book's better than your book. My book said in Job 14, 14, if a man die, shall he live again? He said, that's the same question. I said, I know it is, but your book asked the question, and your book never gave no answer. My book don't start nothing that it don't finish. If my book started, my book will finish it. <laughs> The question, if a man dies, shall he live again? The question was asked in 1520 B.C. And 1533 years later, the question was answered by Jesus in St. John 11:25. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live again. I told the Muslim, I say, read in your book the third surah, verse 144. He took so long, I had to jump the gun again. The third surah, verse 144, the prophet Muhammad is speaking again. And he says, I am only a messenger of Allah and nothing more. I said, but in my book, Jesus said in John 14 and 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I said, read in your book, the fourth surah, verse 3. He turned to the fourth surah, verse 3, and he was so slow, had to jump the gun again. It said, men, marry as many women as you like, one, two, three, or four. I said, man, your book says a man can have four wives. I said, but my book said in 1 Corinthians 7 and 2, to avoid fornication, that every man have his own wife. Brothers, you don't need but one wife, and you'll do good to take care of her. You'll do good to love her, and keep her, and nourish her, and cherish her. And I took him back and forth, back and forth, as long as it was fun, but finally it wasn't no more fun. The Quran, the Bible, the Quran, the Bible, showing him the superiority of the Bible over the Quran. So I got to finish him off. I said, turn to the third surah, verse 105 and 106. He took all day, but he found it, and I let him read it. <laughs> and this black Muslim, not a, not a follower of Farrakhan, but an Orthodox Muslim, read in his Quran, the third surah, verse 105, in the great and final day of redemption, only white faces will be saved, and all blackened faces will be condemned. And I said to him, have you looked in the mirror lately? I said, you just read it in your book. I said, brother, what is your problem? You belong to a religion, and your own book says you can't be saved. I said, are you senile? Do you have Alzheimer's? Are you retarded? Do you have brain damage, or do you smoke dope? I wouldn't belong to a religion if my book said I couldn't be saved. <laughs> but I said, be encouraged. Be uplifted. I have for you a most marvelous, competent, encouraging, and gospel announcement. My book said in Galatians 3 and 28, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. We are all one in Christ Jesus. The gospel can reach them all. Doesn't matter who they are. And from that point, I, don't, I, took him to the, I took him to the cross and I tried to point out the efficacious work that Jesus accomplished when he went to that cross that Friday. Not, not Friday, but that Wednesday. Not Good Friday, that blood Wednesday. When he went to the cross and shed his blood. And to make a long story short, I said, let me ask you, Yusuf Nui Muhammad, when you became a Muslim, I said, you took the name Yusuf Nui Muhammad. What was your name before then? He said, my slave name was Charles David Johnson. I said, I see. Your slave name was Charles David Johnson, 
So you took an Arabic name. I said, brother, you need a history lesson. It was the Arabs that first took Africans and put them in slavery, and you went and got an Arabic name. I said, but you became a Muslim, you took the name Muhammad. I became a Christian, Ephesians 3.15, of whole, the, the whole family in heaven and earth is named. I got the name Jesus. I said, now I showed you already my book is better than your book. My name is better than your name, and my man is better than your man. I said, do you know Muhammad? He said, no, fool, he's dead. I said, you made the point. You don't know Muhammad because he's dead, but I know Jesus because he lives. He lives. To shorten the long story, Yusuf Nuri Muhammad don't like nobody to call him that no more. He likes you to call him Brother Charles David Johnson Jesus. 